Okay, we're holding by the unfortunately last shear in Hilt the Smok Sabeza Hashem. Very, very exciting. Now, I want to make this clear. Not that it's the last shit that we can give on Hilkos Mukta. We could continue for a few years discussing Hilkos Mukta. But Lemaisa, there's other Chalokim of Torah. There's other parts of Hilkos Shabbos that we have to get to. So we're going to try to you know, move on to other topics. But as Hashem, Sunday, we're going to start a new topic. I've no idea what it is. But uh, we're going to try to wrap up Mukta. We've spent, I think, 17 or 18 Shurim on Mukta. Something around there. I'm not sure exactly where we're holding. So we've done pretty, pretty well. You guys have holding pretty well. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. Even the guys in the corner. Great, you guys. Unbelievable. You guys keep me going. Okay, let's move on, Rabbi Say. Okay, I want to discuss two topics today that we've talk- I told you that we're going to discuss right towards the end. And that is as follows. Tiltul minat sad and tiltul begufoy. Right, these are very, very important topics in Mukta because until now, we have discussed the types of Mukta that are osa how to move them, what situations you can move them. The following two Eterim apply in most cases that you will be allowed to move almost every type of Mukta, right? Obviously within certain types of guidelines. But the idea is that this is a Heta. So therefore, that's why I took it right to the end, because once you know all the Gedorim of what's Mukta and what Gedor of Mukta and what level of Mukta it is, so now you'll know what type of Heta you have based on what we're dealing with. So we'll start like this. There's a Gemara. In Shabbos Kuf Men Beis Hamad Beis, where the Gemara tells us like this. <coughs> Listen carefully, Rabbi, so you've got to get this one clear. The Gemara says, Shabbos Kuf, Kuf, Beis, Kuf Men Beis Hamad Beis, if there is an Evan on a Chovis. Okay, that means, if there is a stone on a barrel, what is the din? Nosan Meir. What? So the Gemara says, to tilt the Chovis, Right? To tilt the barrel and the stone falls off by itself. Obviously we're discussing a non-bosses situation. Everything we're discussing until now is a non-bosses. So I have a stone on a barrel. I need to get to the wine in the barrel. I need to move the barrel. There's a stone there. Stone is muqtah mach muskufai. What do I do? So I take the barrel and I tilt it slightly. The stone rolls off. Shalom al I can have a barrel that I can now move. There is a problem. The problem with this is a Gemara in Shabbos, Mem Gimel Omer Aleph. This is the problem. Yaakov, Taiti, Toda Raba. So the Gemara in Shabbos, Mem Gimel Omer Aleph, tells us like this, Amud Beis, says like this. And the problem is that the Shulchan Aruch and Shinyat Aleph goes with this also. That if you have a mace, Rachman al a person has a mace, a dead body, and there is no bread or child to put onto the mace in order to allow you to move the mace, so the Gemara, which is Pascha in Shulchan Aruch, says that it's also to move the mace even minatsad, even in an indirect manner. Why? Why? Because, because the Gemara says, tiltul minatsad shmei tiltul. That means the Gemara qualifies moving something indirectly through something else is called a tiltul. Now we have a stira. In one way, the Gemara tells us, if you have a stone on a barrel, tilt the barrel. Why? Indirect tilt The other Gemara tells us that if you have a mace and you don't have anything to move it with in an indirect way, it won't help you to move it in an indirect way anyway, because tilt them in a touch, may tilt them. It's called tilt So we have a steerer. How do we answer the steerer? It depends what you want to move. Ooh, what does that mean? If you want the barrel, you can knock out the stone. If you want to move the mace. Wow, Yitzchak. Ah. Ah, unbelievable, unbelievable. Mamish unbelievable, all the way from Gateshead. That's Kavaldik. Comes along Yitzhi Fortune and said, hold on a minute. They have a simple turrets. It's a beautiful turrets. Okay, well, so, well, 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 so the Shidduch resume will give out afterwards, okay? Don't worry about it, okay? All right, Mori, what's the turrets? You have to know this for the rest of your life. The answer is like Yitzhi said. Are you doing it at Tzorich Dava HaAsa? In the case of the barrel, I need the barrel. Tiltum and Atzad, if it's done, it's Soyach Aheta, it's Muta. Masha Enkein, if you're doing it in the case of the mace, like the Gemara in Shabbos Lam Gimel, where I'm doing it for the mace itself, because I need to move the Issa. Tiltum and Atzad, it's Soyach Dava Asa, it's Asa. First of all, is that a clear distinction? Is everybody with me? Hello? Yeah. Right? Okay. Now. This is going to be the Nafkamina 
in many of the cases of tiltal min hatsan. Now, first of all, before we get on to practical cases, what's the lambdas? Why is it mutter? Why is it mutter to move something if I move it min hatsad? If I move it in an indirect way? Well, all of a sudden, it's like, you know, people, there's, there's a heter for everything in Yiddish, okay? well, as long as you know what the heter is, we'll, we'll find the loophole. Yeah. What's pshat? It's not a loophole. What is the loophole? What's the loophole? It's not even a loophole. What's the heter? What's the lomdus for by itself, the heter? Anybody? What's the pshat? Before Shabbos, you wanted to drink the wine. No, 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 I'm doing before Shabbos. On Shabbos, why is tiltul min hatsad? Not a problem if it's done the Torah of a heter. What's that? You're not going to use the muktzah. Not going to use the muktzah? What does that mean? Meaning you're not. Okay. So, so I, I hear Shimon. I think you're coming close to it. I think what we could answer is based on what we said in the beginning, Yaakov. Based on what we said in the beginning, that what? That the whole yisoid of muktzah is you may come to carry, you may come to use it, you may come to all sorts of things. That's as Gezeira do Abonon after all. Mimela, when you're not moving the actual item of muktzah, Chazal will not chayshish in such a case. Okay? That's reason number one. The Chazanish has another mahalach in Ksim and Memzain. The Chazanish writes, huh? what do you want to say? What? Ah, the Chazanish <laughs> wants to say like this. The Chazanish says the Svara is that since it's, do, it's being done with Tzorich Dova Heta, so the Kavan of the person is to move the Heta. Agav, you use, you're moving the Mukta. We don't even attribute the Tiltal being done on the Mukta because my Kavan is on the Heta. What? You want to say something on the Chazanish? You, are you with me? Rabbi, so you've got to get these Svaras. These are very simple Svaras. It's very important. Okay, now. Let's make this very, very clear. What? I want you to listen to know the halachas. That's all. It's not me who needs to know it. Baruch Hashem. It's you. Okay. So, tiltum in atzad let's say it. What? Should I question me? You should give it out? Okay. So. Tiltum in atzad let's say it. Dava haheta is muta. Let's say dava asa is muta. Which means. Asa is muasa. Which means. Let's say, for example, you have in the freezer your ice cream, and the ice cream is in the back of the freezer, and you have in front of it something, let's say, raw fish that's frozen. So according to everyone that's mokta, it's raw fish and it's frozen, and there's no hefset because it's not going to get ruined. I need to get to my ice cream or the chocolate mousse, which is the back. So I, I take the chocolate mousse, I take the ice cream package, and I sort of schlep it out. And as I do that, the mokta is being moved. So that's called total minatsad, lutsoirich dova ha mota. Ha mota being that which is okay. Right? Either I need the heta or I need the mokim would be included in lutsoirich dova ha heta. Okay? So that is basically, that is the main heta that we have to discuss, and that's what's very, very important. Now, if it's lutsoirich the mukta, then it's going to be asa. To be metaltal the mukta, minatsad, lutsoirich the mukta, that would be a problem. So, for example, Let's say I've got muktzah out in the rain, and I can't move it because it's not a klisha malach to list. And even if it was, it's not the tzorich makoma or gufoi, it's the tzorich machamal itself because it's going to get wet outside. So I have an eitzah. What's the eitzah? I'll take a knife and I'll sort of schlep it in. You know, I won't touch the muktzah itself. I'm not going to touch the camera itself. I'll just sort of schlep it in with a knife, right? So that's going to be asa. Why? Tiltum and atzad, the soaked of asa. And that is, of course, going to be asa. So that is a problematic situation. And therefore, that's why a person has to know why are you doing tiltum min hatzad. Agav, you should know. There was Shonim bring down that one of the reasons why you're allowed to sweep on Shabbos. What's the header to sweep up on Shabbos? What's the header to. Okay, so one header would be Grav Shorei in a Hanami. But the other header, if it's not discussed in the tunnel as well. What is it? You were telling him. What is it? The Kovac mm. Shabbos doesn't allow you to do anything you want. <laughs> right? it's, those people, it's like those people that have been covered in priests against these baby wipes. Garbage. What? Who? If you don't do it, it's also Shabbos. If you don't do it, it's also Shabbos? Because you mean else, because of Graf Sharei, because it's disgusting. One of their team is, it's also because of Total Menatzad. The Ramban says this. It's Total Menatzad, because I'm not touching the Muktzah itself. I'm touching the broom which touches the Muktzah. Right? And therefore, that's why. No, now you're dealing with Dine Baba Kama, because that's a den of Groma or Garmi. That's already a whole different Shaila, which we can't go into. Now, Rabbi, so let's move on. Let's move on. There's a lot more to do. There's a lot more to do. I want to move on. I want to move on. Is that Tiltum and Atzad, Lutsoirich, Dava, Ha, Muta? 
Well, Bryce, let me ask you a question. Oh, if you have a mux in your house, and you know, what? And you know that you're going to move it, minat is there is there a chiyav uh, before Shabbos to organize it that you won't have to move it minat For example, the case of the freezer. Do I have to check out the freezer before Shabbos so that I won't come onto a shayla of tiltum minat by moving the ice cream in front of the fish? Do, do I have an obligation to do that? So Vilyashiv Zatzal Paskind, Vilyashiv Paskind, that just as, huh? just as there's an obligation for a person to shake the mukta from the item on Shabbos rather than being metaltal at Minatzad, so so too Vilyashiv Paskind, he brought a toast to Zariah, that you should lechatchila try to make sure that all of your items are not going to be moved Minatzad if I can get out of it. Meaning, if I know that I have the ice cream in the back of the freezer before Shabbos, if I know about it, then obviously you should try to organize it. Don't come along and say, ah, leave it, I can do it Minat Sad. Minat Sad is a heta. If you don't have to come onto the heta, then you, you should be machmeh. However, Rav Yashem seems to be a das yachid over here, because most gedolei posts come and it's even mashma this way in the Chazan Ish, and the bells are dying in Shevet Kahasi and other Rav Shleim Zalman, Rav Chaim Kenevsky, and others that held no, there's absolutely no problem. Once there's a heta moving at Minat Sad, meaning there's no issa of moving mukta at Minat Sad, there's no problem with moving mukta, and therefore even if you know about it, then there is no problem. Okay, moving on Rabbi Sai. Let's talk about Tilto. Let's talk about one last thing. The one last thing is, what if it's the normal thing to move at Minat Sad? I'll give you a classic example. We discussed this yesterday. If you have a cupboard in your kitchen that you open, and it brings the schleps along the bin with it. So we were talking about bosses. Let's leave out bosses for a moment. Let's say it's not bosses. Let's say there's moksha in there. Is that called tiltul minat sad? I'm not touching the bin. I'm touching the cupboard, the handle of the cupboard. And by opening the cupboard, it schleps the bin with it, but I'm not touching the bin. The bin is moksha, not the handle, not the cupboard door. But is that called tiltul minat sad? Or do we say tiltul minat sad is not a normal way of moving it? Over here, it is the normal way of moving it, because that they was created for this. Are you with me? Then you wouldn't be able to broom. Then you would not be able to broom. I hear. And Akhanami. You'd have to come onto the same shaila when it comes to booming. That's very, very good. You'd have to come to the same shaila when it comes to a and a maisa. So it's very, very interesting. I didn't find this anywhere in the Mishtabura when he discusses the shaila of Mukta. He doesn't go into what if it's the derech to move it min hatzad. Rabbi Shlomo Zalman wants to say that if it's the derech to move it min hatzad, then it could be its osa. Now, there's other terms with brooming, like, for example, Graf Shorei and whatever, and Sorech Shabbos and Kovach Shabbos, all sorts of things. But if it's the normal way to move the Muqtza, Minat Sad, so it could be there's more of a Mokim to be Mekel. I will tell you with the bin and the cupboard, there's other Hetayim also, by the way. There's the Heter, if also, if you've got something Heter on it, then it's for sure okay. And even without that, there's a Heter that's attached to the ground, called a Mokhobal Kakarika Kakarika Domi, without going into all the Sugyas, but that could be another Heter to move that. Now, let's move on to the last Sugya. We've got Tultul Minat Sad down. Let's talk about Tultul Begufa because this is probably the biggest heta in Hilchas Mokta. Okay? The biggest heta in Hilchas Mokta. I'll tell you a Maisa Shahaya. True story of us. So, La Lenu such a Maisa. La Lenu such a Maisa. We should never know such stories. Rahman let's learn such stories in Klali So, I'm walking down the street one time. I'm walking down the street and I see a from Yid standing in the middle of the road. A little bit weird. He's just like standing there. So I walk past and I look back and he's like, Rabbi, do you have a question? Do you have a minute? So, like, he's standing there. He's like, not moving. Is everything okay? He's got a hundred dollars under his, under, his, under his shoe. He wants to know, what am I allowed to do? It's a hundred dollars. It's a hundred dollars. Hello, it's not a hundred shekel. It's a hundred dollars. Actually, now, how much the difference is? It's a hundred dollars. So basically, what's he meant to do? Is there any heta? Shimon, is there any heta? There's no heta. Really? What's an indirect way mean? You really need it? You really need it, you're That's how it goes? Is that a heto? Are you allowed to do mukta that way? Okay, so Rabbi said, let me give you the makar. Let me give you the makar and we'll answer the question. We're going to answer the story, don't worry. We're going to answer the story. One second, Rabbi said. La Lenu, La Lenu is such a maisa. Rabbi said, Chas Shalom. La Lenu, I can't tell you where it is. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want to disclose details, it's not nice, the guy won't find the shidduch, it's not, not going to die. Now, um, Rabbi Sai. We can understand. Yes. Okay. Now, let me give you the Makar, Rabbi Sai. Very, very important Makar. There's a Gemara in Shabbos, Kuf, Mem, Aleph, Omid, Aleph. And the Gemara says, if there's cash on a bed, shake it, Begufai. What's cash? 
Money. Not cash. Cash. <laughs> David. Ah. What is it? Straw. Straw. There we go. Okay, straw is mukta on Shabbos. It's animal food, it's mukta. So the Gemara says, what are you meant to do? Tilt a lip begufa, shake it begufa. Comes along Rabbeinu Yoyna in Shabbos Simon Yontes. And Rabbeinu Yoyna, which is bad some in the Rosh. The Rosh brings Rabbeinu Yoyna. And he says, I don't understand. It's the tiltum and atzad l'tzoyrech dova ha'asa. In fact, the Rosh, we have a problem. How did the Gemara say it's mutta? Says the Rosh, we have a problem because we know that tiltum and atzad l'tzoyrech dova ha'asa is asa. So in fact, the Rosh, how did the Gemara say it's mutta? Answers the Rosh that the tiltal is being done begufoi, not minat sad, begufoi. From this Rosh, we have a new makar that mukta that is moved begufoi is going to be mutta. There's other rays in the Gemara and Shabbos Kuf Kuf Zayin, which we're not going to go into, but there are many different rays over here. And the Yisoid basically is in the Shulchan Aruch, Paskins this way, Lalocha Lamaisa, which is also a Ramban. A tall Shulchan Aruch and Ramah, and the Nesivas and Derech Hachaim and the Mishtabura that they say La Alocha LeMaisa Tiltul Begufoi is Mota even the Tsoyrech Dava Hamukta. So meaning until now we've learned Tiltul Minat Sad, which is only Mota the Tsoyrech Dava Heta comes along the Rosh in Simon Yutes and brings the Rabbeinu Yoyna based on the Gemara and says that Tiltul Begufoi. Is muta even the tzayrek dava asa, which means even the tzayrek hamukta is going to be asa, is going to be muta in this case. Now I will tell you, there's a moyedika chazanish, there's an unbelievable chazanish over here. Okay, based on this Rabbeinu Yonah, based on this Rosh. And the Chazanish wants to say, and again, we haven't got time to be Mayrech and Pshat in the Chazanish right now, how he learns the Gemara. But the Chazanish learns different Pshat in the Gemara than the Rosh did. And the Chazanish says that when you're lying on the bed, so Mamela, you're, you're, you're lying on the bed. Agav, you happen to be moving around, moving the cash. But not Chas Shalom says the Chazanish, that my Kavana was to move the cash. No, I'm not. According to the Chazanish, if your Kavana is to move the cash, it's Asa. According to the Chazanish, Kultu Beguva Litzorok Dava Asa is Asa. How he learns the Gemara? Well, not for now. But a Kapolan the Chazanish holds that most of these cases are Asa. But according to Poshet Pshat and Shulchan Aruch, Prima Godim, Nesivis and Derech HaChaim, the Mishnah Purah, Dorech HaShulchan, the Graz, Kafachaim, they all hold that everything is okay. Tiltu Beguva is Muta Afinu Litzorok Dava Ha Asa. What does it mean, Tiltu Begufoi? Good question. So number one, the Mishnah Burra says, if you move something with your elbow, by the way, this is the header to move anything. This is the head if, if you've got a camera outside. This is the head if you've got a phone on your bed. Leave out the Shiloh bosses, no bosses. I want to move something. I've got money on the floor. What's the din? Tiltu Begufoi. If you live with a Tzot Dovah HaMukta, it's going to be Muta. So, elbow. Mishnah Burra says, in Meshah and Bavsi Gotten Naman Alev, that moving uh, an item with an elbow is called Tiltu Min Hatzad. And therefore, if it's Tzot Dovah Asa, Obviously, it's going to be Asa. Most Poiskin, the Shulchan Archa Rab, and Baltania, and Reisha, and Vavsi, Kotten Yud, and Shlomo Zalman, and Rabbi and others held that it's Mutta. In other words, an elbow is called Tiltul Begufoi. And moving something with your elbow is called Tiltul Begufoi. I feel the Dover Hamukta is going to be Mutta. The Mishnah says, back of your hand, right? The back of your hand is called Tiltul Minatzad, not Tiltul Begufoi. Many hold, including the Shulchan Archa Rab, Chacham Ben Sinab Shaul in Oret Zion, hold that it is called Tiltul Begufoi. Uh, moving something with your foot, even the Mishnah Burah is masking, is called Tiltul Begufoi. So your head, your knee, your teeth, all of these things, remember when we discussed the Shaila about the, the, the screw in the glasses that gets, locked, that gets on the table and my glasses are now mukta because I can't use it otherwise. So one of the Ateum we said, if you remember, I told you we'll get to it, is pick it up with your lips, put it down the drain, now you can use your glasses because there's no screw there anymore, there's no Xerosh Yiska in that case. So I, the Olam asks, what about mukta? And the answer is the Shimon. <laughs> the answer is Tiltu Begufoi. Tiltu Begufoi will help you in that case. And then it's Mokta. Rabbi said, going back to our Shaila, with the guy that finds the $100 bill, a hundred, what's he meant to do with the hundred? Very simple. He takes his foot out of his shoe, he crunches the $100 bill with his foot, he puts it back into the shoe, and he confidently walks off, hoping nobody noticed what he did. Rabbi Sai, we ended Hilchas Mokta. We'll see you Sunday with a brand new topic. Be'ezashem.